Hi everyone, I'm Alex Nevermore, the Mischief Maker, and today we're going to be making homemade fresh pasta from scratch. This is literally the easiest recipe ever, and I feel like you'll never use a boxed pasta again because it's that easy. Okay, so to get started, what I like about it is um, I made this for a dinner the other day. And basically, I, I, look, I do not recall measuring flour out on the scale. I know I did it. And I've made this for birthday part, like for my birthday dinner like years ago with lots of batches. So this makes like enough for maybe two, like four people for a light lunch, but like two people for dinner. If you're gonna do like a simple tomato sauce with it. I made um, a pasta all Norma eggplant pasta with it the other day but it's so easy and I think it kind of like levels up the dinner game a little bit if you're trying to do something special so let's get started white lily all-purpose flour um, I'm just gonna go for it I'm also making mocha dog food if you're wondering I like to scoop it out of the bowl. One second. Mildly chaotic per usual, but I just like to measure flour out of the bowl for some reason. And plus maybe you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So anyway, it was just white lily all-purpose flour. My favorite flour at this point if you've watched enough of me talking about things. So, just a very loose cup of flour how easy this is so one cup of flour and then you're gonna take um, like mochas in here eating you just have to accept the level of chaos that this house is at this point in life um, I have to re re look it's like instant pot dog eating she just wants to be involved <laughs> so you make a well in the center of your flour here and actually what I should do is just move the camera over here so you can just see what I'm doing and you don't have to wonder okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our one cup of flour and we're gonna make a little well in the center here okay I'm gonna crack one whole egg in it and then two yolks Okay, so I was like, the Darth Vader, you know, is Miss Mocha, but we don't have the heart to, to tell her. Okay. Okay, so one and then two. Oop. I'm just going to start over. I broke it. Okay, so two. Now, shouldn't have done that. Back. Anyway, it's fine. Basically, you go into the center now from the outsides. Shouldn't have told it up to show you, but it'll be fine. And just swirl it around until it's a shaggy mass with this fork. So all it's been, one cup of flour, one whole egg, and then two egg yolks. So, shaggy mass, shaggy mass. We're getting there. This is literally the quickest thing ever. When I made it again the other day, I was like, yeah, I'm just never making pasta out of a box again. Because it's just too easy. And you can do whatever you want with the shapes after. Okay, so, gather it up. And then it's like, if it's still a little dry, you can add the third egg yolk. I always add the third, oh, whoops. I always add the third egg yolk because basically you would rather have it be too wet than too dry. And you know what? You can just see, like, there's still flour in here. Let's just go for it. 
messy hands and all and do the third egg white. freak you out that my hands are this messy, but it's fine. Okay. Third egg white. And then um, draw in the rest of the flower. So, third egg white. Draw in the rest of the flower here. And then we're going to put it on a flour dusted board and knead it for five minutes and that's it. After that, it just sits in the fridge for um, 45 minutes and then you can do whatever you want with it. So, I mean, this took under five minutes. The kneading part's going to take under five minutes. Okay. So, we've got our wet little dough situation. I'm going to wash my hands and then do the next part. Okay. So, I've got my little wooden cutting board. I'm gonna just dust it with some flour. Hopefully you can see this, but it's just a wet dough, just a basic egg dough. So, we're gonna set a timer for five minutes and knead it, okay? Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. It'll stickier today than it usually does. I'm like sitting here like, okay, how many eggs did I add? I feel like it was probably a little too much, but there we go. to do is rinse my hand again but we'll just go for it here five minutes and then it just you know chills out for 45 minutes we'll just sit here and do it I feel like I did the right amount of eggs one two yolk we added a third this is right. So you wrap it in plastic wrap, and I'm also probably just going to throw it in a Ziploc bag just to hang out in there. Um, but it really, I mean, the other afternoon it really was just a dream. I'm like, honestly, it's probably me on camera, but I don't even recall my hands being sticky, to be honest. I'm gonna actually just rinse them really quick so that it's more fun. just add like 30 seconds or a minute if I wanted to do that for whatever reason. Where are you, Flower? So four people, you could do this twice. So this is for two people for dinner. So, you know, you're gonna have six people, do it three times. You're gonna have four people, do this recipe twice. Um, I always make too much of it when I start doubling it. But uh, I 
usually feel like people over dramatize those things. They're like, oh, my meringue won't work because the weather. Yeah, it's true, but then it's only true to an extent, you know. You should still, it should still pretty much work. Maybe some slight alterations. I should just insert the clip right about now of how pretty it looked last time I did it. And I think I will. So, I like to just use the um, palm of my hand. I do the same thing with my fondant, so I mean it's all pretty similar. But this is done, I do believe. It just needs to be wrapped up in some little plastic wrap. 45 minutes. Okay. So, I don't really have, I don't, I think I'm out of plastic wrap. We're just going to press and seal it. I know, I'm an animal. And then just, I'm just going to put it in this because why not? 45 minutes. all this stuff up let's talk about other things that you need for this recipe you don't need but it's it's the way I'm gonna do it and it's nice to have and whenever I'm one of these people that like wants the things if I'm gonna do something you know and you, that's not to say that you could not do this a million different ways like you could get a hand crank pasta machine to roll it out you could you know cut the strips yourself It'll work. Like, make it work. Don't feel like you need these things, but I, but I have them because the cakes, and I've had them for years, so I'm gonna use what I've got. So, I have the KitchenAid mixer, and then I have uh, two different pasta attachments. Um, so this one is, I don't know what the, I guess it's just a pasta roller. And I used to use it for the sugar flowers, but uh, actually it doesn't roll them thin enough, in my opinion. So we do everything by hand. But um, yeah, pasta roller. KitchenAid, KitchenAid attachments. I've had two boxes of things. This one was a set that must have had the pasta roller and the fettuccine. What was this one? Capellini. More like a lasagna. Said to do this recipe, you should order if it still exists the pasta roller fettuccine set. Um, and again, it just like depends on what your noodle is that you want. I just wanted like a long, thin noodle for the pasta alla norma that I made, and these are the ones that I have. And fettuccine was the closest, and it's just fast. So this is the fettuccine sort of thing attachment, not thing. And um, well, I'll just bring it closer and show you this way because it would make more sense. And I probably maybe wasn't even on camera. <laughs> so another thing I've done here is like you could lay parchment, but the other day I just did aluminum foil, which kind of worked because then you can just, when you make a mess with all of the things, you can just wad it up, okay? So it's not like gonna make a huge, huge mess. You know, normally I'm not opposed to making a mess and then cleaning it up for the sake of creativity and all, but there's no reason. So, this is the pasta roller. This is the fettuccine one. Okay. So, just showing the stuff and things first. Um, basically, it fits in the top here. Where is that little screw? Can you see? Okay. So at first you, you roll it out and we'll talk about it a bunch of times, which is this, but it's super fast. And you also 
This is like cheap and it works. And if you're going to make this for a crowd right now, you can put um, like a parchment or like foil lined um, like sheet pan in the freezer and then keep it in there. And every single time you're doing this, you're adding it. But this keeps the pasta from sticking together, okay? It's cheap. Like there are other versions of fine cornmeal. I have fancy versions of it. I used this the other day. It was perfect. And you can get this anywhere for like a few dollars. So I think it makes more sense. So then just to change it at the very end, any one. And you know, basically once it's screwed on. Anyway. Just wanted, just wanted to say, if you wanted to like buy the things for the project, fettuccine, roller, plus roller, get shade mixer, cornmeal, but you do not have to do that. You know, hand crank ones and rolling it out and then like just cutting it into strips by hand will work too. This is just fast and easy. So. I mean, I think this is like one of the best, like most versatile recipes that you could really use because you could do basically most things that you want with it. So, I mean, we could always play with different pasta dough recipes in the future, but I mean, one cup of flour, one egg, three egg yolks eventually. It's just, you know, knead for five minutes, fridge for 45 minutes. It's just like kind of a no-brainer. You could make it the night before, so. I think it, and it, and it is good. Really good. So, I think it's an easy way to level up your dinners. I'm just saying. So our pasta has been in the fridge for 45 minutes. And I'm actually not gonna unwrap this whole thing because what we need are just to pull off golf ball sized amounts of this pasta. And um, I'm just gonna do all that closer so you can see, okay? Okay, so we've got our, our dough. I'm not gonna undo the whole thing. So it's still gonna be sticky, okay? Golf ball sized amount here. We've got our flour. We're just going to do flour and a little cornstarch on this little area because why not? But you have to pat this little golf ball-y dough. Is that a golf ball? It could be bigger, maybe. I don't know how big golf balls are. Um, but the point is, is that you are having to put this flour on the side so that it just doesn't stick to itself, right? And then again, so there you go. And then I'm actually just gonna put this back in the fridge. I don't know if that's necessary, but that's how I've been doing it. So you're only working with like this amount at a time. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our, our pasta machine. Can you see? I feel like you can't see. Now you can see. I guess that didn't make sense. But anyway, golf ball sized amount. So, flour both sides so it doesn't stick in this thing. And we're gonna start with number one and then get started. So, number one, we're gonna do first, all right? And again, if need be, pat it. We're gonna go through one on one twice, two, Three, and four. But seriously though, guys, like people will think it's very special that you made it yourself. Okay, so this is five. And you do number five twice, okay? Again, pat it, okay? So it sounds kind of whatever, but it's really not bad. So here you go, five. 
split it in half. And then we'll do six ones, okay? Six and six. Oops. Okay, now let's stop it and switch. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So we're on the fettuccine attachment now. And also, it's cornmeal to keep it from sticking, really, I believe, at this stage. I'll have to check my notes over here. So there's like a little squ uh, like square in there that it goes into. Switching. We're gonna switch to cornmeal. So this only has one setting. This doesn't have like multiple settings the cornmeal part and actually we're going to take it and put it directly into the freezer there so you got all your little beautiful noodles so Let's go ahead and get a cookie sheet lined with aluminum foil to throw these in the freezer. As we work, we'll just add each batch. So here's just an aluminum foil lined cookie sheet freezer. Every time you do your little golf ball, you know, cornstarch, pick up the bits, which we ideally would have already had and, and just put them on here just so that it's not getting to whatever. So again, more graceful if you just, it doesn't really matter. There, there's our first little batches. So let's keep going. Go take the fettuccine roller off, put the other one back, and that's what you do until your, all of your little whatever, your dough is gone. There's a, a lone noodle. Okay. So, pan, maybe some flour. Grab this golf ball. Okay. Pat it just around, start on one again, really turn it back to one as you go so that you don't mess up. <clears throat> okay, so one, and then one again, pat with flour as needed over here. And then we're going to go two. Three. Four. Okay. We're going to do five twice. One. Two, okay, and then get your knife, cut it in half, just to make it more manageable, okay? I love that that's a cheese knife. <clears throat> anyway, who cares? So number six, it goes through one half on number six. Another One half on number six. Oh. And then we are going to switch to the fettuccine. Mocha's watching every single little bit of it. Are you a good helper, babe? Are you a good helper? You all should see how cute she looks. Okay. So. 
da 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 da. We're fettuccine ing. And we're just gonna take these and put them. See what I did, but I threw them in there and, I and put them back. I wasn't filming any of that, but I just said if you take some cornmeal. Put it in here. Then by the time it's dinner time, you know, they'll be frozen, not stuck together. And you can add them directly to your salt water and get your stuff going. Okay, let's do it one last time. So, we're going to get our, our golf ball again. I don't know a lot about sports, so I'm just going to say this is good. And, you know, up to you. Basically, it's like if you pinch off more, what's going to happen is it's going to be a, lo a longer um, strip for you to have to deal with. So there's our little golf ball. Switch it back to the pasta roller again. You might not want to see this three times, but I would. Okay. Put it in a little black cake. Number one. Do that a few times. Number two. Number three. Pat it with some more flour. Four. Number five, plus. That's the one that you had to remember. Number five, plus. But I mean, once you get kind of used to the method, it's really not bad at all. It's not bad anyway, but. Mm. So cut it in half to make it more manageable. Last time we're gonna do it together. Number six. Woo. I'm getting tired myself. Another number six. Okay. There. Our two little pasta cheeks. Switch to the fettuccine. <sighs> Miss Mocha, what are you doing over there? Huh? Of course I didn't film that one. <laughs>